five of them. Let's see if we can get five out of five. In Dutch, what would be the modern equivalent for in Dutch? Raise hands. Let's hear it. On the spot. Uh, I don't think exactly. It's pretty good. In the doghouse. In the doghouse. Yes, yeah, General Johnson. <laughs> There's a wry smile on General Johnson's face. In the doghouse is correct. Two, humdinger. Humdinger. Uh, Mr. Levant. It's a wow. Yes, a wow or a knockout. Very good. The merry ha-ha. The merry ha-ha. Mr. Levant. The Bronx chair. Yes. Blue. I can't do you it. You can't do it. Thank heaven. You want to do it on the piano? No, no I not have good. enough for the piano. Uh, a cad. A cad. A rat. A uh, rat be all right. Uh, better than a rat. Well, Basil Rathman in any picture. No, better than a rat. <laughs> Ratbone? Ratbone. One of our distinguished guests. Goodness gracious. Uh, it makes a lot of money being a rat. I think a rat's all right. A heel would be better, perhaps. A heel. And uh, do you remember the old expression which I had never have known how to pronounce? Pshaw. 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 Uh, Pshaw. Ron Nert. Nerd, very good. General, General Johnson, thank you very much. <laughs> now, at this point, a careful statistical checkup reveals that Canada Dry has lost a grand total of $10. And now, how about lending an ear, or better still, a pair of ears, to our Canada Dry expert, Mr. Milton Cross. Thank you, Mr. Fadiman. When we trace the history of civilization back to its beginnings, we find that it has progressed step by step with man's hospitality toward his fellows. For when a man discovered a good thing in life, he invited his friends to come to his abode and share it with him. Careful, Mr. Cross. First thing you know, Mr. Adams and Mr. Kieran will be showing up at my apartment. <laughs> they do that, you know, at the drop of a hat or a hint. <laughs> well, I think you'd better be prepared for them, Mr. Fadiman, because I'm sure you've discovered a good thing in life. I mean, of course, sparkling Canada Dry Water, that delicious club soda which adds so much life to your favorite drink. Yes, the secret of giving long life to your drink has finally been discovered. The secret is Canada Dry's pinpoint carbonation, which means millions of smaller bubbles, lasting liveliness, extra tastiness. And sparkling Canada Dry water will still be sparkling even after the bottle has been opened for 24 hours. So for the utmost in hospitality, be sure when ordering club soda to specify sparkling Canada Dry water. Thanks, Mr. Cross. You sparkled that one off in 58 seconds. Now we'll get back to our Inquisition. Let's see what Mr. R.M. Green in New Rochelle, New York, wants you to do. Is there a bugler in the house? Yes, there is. I'm going to ask the bugler to play five bugle calls as used in the Army. Now, I know that Mr. Levant... Uh, <laughs> like that one, General? I know Mr. Levant is the only one I of the board... I can't they're going up or down. Otherwise, I know... Well, now you just keep your ears open... They're all taps to me. Well, he was a general. He didn't have to bother with bugle calls. <laughs> Doesn't he ever hear a bugle call? No. Let's see what he can do with these five. All right, let's have the first one. Mr. Adams. Mess call. Mess call. Now hold your seat, gentlemen. Hold your seat. Hold your seat. Sandwiches and Canada Dry ginger ale will be served after 9 p.m. Mess is right. Now the next one. Mr. Kieran, veteran Kieran. I think that's to the colors. To the colors is quite correct. Third. General Johnson. First call. Very good. Thank you, General. Uh, the next. Uh, General Johnson. Assembly. I beg pardon? Assembly. Assembly. Yes, I get it. I get it. I like tiger All right. That's a, that's a corporal's voice, not a general's voice, General Johnson. I think you better ask John these. He knows them better than I do. Isn't he good, though? <clears throat> All right, let's have the fifth and last. Let's, uh, Mr. Adams. Have Mr. Tap. Uh, Adam. Pardon? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Taps for you, Mr. Adams. Taps for you, General Johnson. Tattoo. I beg your pardon? Tattoo. Uh, that wouldn't be the same as retreat. No. Right? Retreat is right. Well, now, Corporal Adams and General Johnson are both wrong on that, I'm sorry to say. Uh... Ex Adler Kieran is correct. Attaboy. <laughs> you came in a little too late. <clears throat> Let's see. We were only to get four to five on that. That'll be okay. I guess you've never heard retreat, have you, General Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> it's the most welcome call in the whole list. <laughs> see what you can do with this one. And this comes from Mr. G. Keeler of Windsor, Connecticut. Name the novels or plays in which the following trials occur. One, there's a remarkable resemblance between the prisoner and one of his lawyers, and this aids the defense, Mr. Kieran. 
Tale of Two Cities, yes. Sidney Carton and uh, uh, Lucy Manet, Manette's husband. Uh, Charles me. Darnay. Right. Yes, that's quite. That's, that's very good. Far, very good. far right. better thing. Karen answered that. Yes. Do you, want, do you want to go ahead and give us no, that? No, I was going to answer that, that one. No? Just knew a quotation from it, yeah. eh? Yeah. Far, far. You wait far. a while. We'll get a couple of quotations for you a little later on in the program. The second one. The defendant, believing himself guilty of murder, is proved innocent by a small boy's testimony. Where's that come from? Uh, Mr. Kieran. Uh, Mark Twain. Uh, yes, the uh, name of the book. The name of the book was uh, Huckleberry Finn, yes, I the, think. the other one, the other Tom one. Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. The Indian. Good. Tom Sawyer. <laughs> Indian yes, Joe. Right. Indian. Remember Muff Potter, who was accused of murdering Judge Robinson? And he was proved innocent, and it was proved that Engine Joe slipped a knife in Potter's hand while Potter was asleep. Right. I've got them all under a spell, ladies and gentlemen. Three, the court punishes the prisoner for his wish by making the wish come true. General Johnson. Man without a catch. Yes, indeed. Philip Miller. Very good. The one who wished never to see his country again and was granted his wish. The judge, in a breach of promise case, settles the matter by marrying the plaintiff himself. Mr. Adams. Trial by jury. Yes, our Gilbert and Sullivan authority comes to bat, knocks out a homer. Very good. Uh, five and last. Monsieur Florio is the lawyer for Madame Florio, who is charged with murder. General Johnson. Madame Mack. Very good. Very good, General Johnson. Uh, what do you do with your spare time, General Johnson? <laughs> See Madame X. By the way, who wrote Madame X, General? Do you know? I can't tell you. Neither that. do I. Anybody know? Frenchman. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I it may have been Air Vieux, may have been Brio. We'll get a hundred letters tomorrow. Brio, I think. I don't know. A hundred yeah. letters will come tomorrow explaining how ignorant we are, I'm sure. Well, that's five out of five. Very good. Have to get these boys down tonight. They're too bright. The next one from Rochester, New York, from Mr. S. Norton, is a uh, musical problem, and one man has to answer it. The following musical selection, which we're going to have played, is composed of parts of four different songs. You have to identify each of the parts. Now, one man must answer the question correctly with no stumbling. Go right to it. Played it again. All it right. It starts out like Tchaikovsky, but it's really My Heart Sits Still, which is what they call an unconscious influence. <laughs> Dick Rogers wrote it. <laughs> Criticizing your colleagues, are you? Yeah, it's my that? first time I can criticize Dick Rogers. An unconscious influence, but it's My Heart Stood Still from the Connecticut Yankee. Very good. And that's one. Now we have three more to name. Go ahead. Let's hear it. All right. Let's uh, have a little, uh, let's have that again. Please. Gershwin, Love Walked In. Love Walked Right the In. The Golden yeah. Follies. The Golden Follies, that's number two. Small Hotel, yeah, I'm Dick Rogers. No unconscious influence. No unconscious influence. <laughs> nice judgment this evening, Mr. Levant. That's a small hotel, that's right. From what uh, show, do you remember? Small Hotel was on your toes. Very good. Now, there's only one more to name. That was that uh, da 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 dee da 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 FDR yeah. Jones. Yeah, Franklin Lee Rose Sing Jones. Out the News. Sing Out the News. Thank you very much, Mr. Levant. They were all in the news. That's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, the next question. Oh, this is a good one. It's from Dr. Saul R. Kelson of the Massachusetts General Hospital, Boston, Massachusetts. Don't be depressed. Question, what have the following in common? One, Daniel D. Tompkins. Two, Richard M. Johnson. Three, William R. King. Four, William A. Wheeler. Don't tell me they all have middle initials because that's not what I'm after. What else have they in common? W. Uh, w, no, there's no W in Daniel D. Tompkins. Uh, General Johnson. I don't know about that, but I'd like to call attention to this audience and the radio audience to this drive for instant paralysis. That this Why not, General? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> to turn in their dime cards before the end of the month. <laughs> it's a very good time to bring that to the attention of the radio audience. Now, don't you blush, General Johnson. That's perfectly all right. We're glad to have that appeal made. But, General Johnson, that doesn't get you uh, out of answering the question, you know. It's a nice appeal. But you have to tell me what the following have in common. Tom Johnson, Johnson, I just Will. had to get that in while I could. 
What have they in common? Say them again. You like the name. Daniel D. Tompkins, Richard M. Johnson, William R. King, William A. Wheeler. They don't ring a bell in your mind? They're all men. Yes, yes, that's pretty good, General. Not quite good enough. They all got three names. Uh, that's not enough either, Mr. Levant. Nobody Levant. knows who anyone is. Goodness that's gracious. Kind of Four thing. reputable American citizens. Reasonably reputable. And don't know who these gentlemen are. They never heard of me. Four are extremely important men in the history of our country. What they have in common is that they were all vice presidents of the United States. That's all. <laughs> Canada Drive. We'll lose $10 on that one. Goodness gracious. About it. Nobody could answer that question. <laughs> Apparently not, General. At least uh, four people couldn't. General, how would you like to come back on our program some other time? We'll try you again on that. Uh, what can you do with this? This comes from Mr. A.H. Sakier of New York City. Now, one man must define these three terms. The terms sound rather alike. Here they are. Berry Berry, Cheery Berry, Harakiri. General Johnson, want to take that one? Berry Berry is a disease that comes from... Eating too much unpolished rice? Not uh, unpolished, would you say? I mean polished rice. Yes, that's an exclusive right. diet of polished rice. That's and right. Cherry Berry is a part of an Italian song that doesn't mean much of anything. Very any good, more than La La La. And what was the other one? Harry Carey know you're a music a critic too. Japanese suicide. Yes, it's a for self uh, disembowelment. Japanese cure for stomachache. Three out of three. That's very good. It's tough getting these boys down. Let's see what we can do. Uh, with this one. Name the occupation which is brought to mind by each of the three following pieces to be played by the piano. Let's have one. That's uh, from an opera. Yes, what opera? The barber, the barber of yes. Seville. And the occupation is a barber. All right, let's have the next. Number two. Adam's Alley. It is up Mr. Adam's Alley. How about it, Mr. Adam? You can whistle it, but we have to have words on this program. Let's have not a little music. more of it. Want a little more of that? Find the music on you, General. Oh, I'll let him have a little more. Mr. Adam. Policeman. Very good. A policeman's lot is not a happy one from Gilbert and Sullivan's Policeman's Chorus. And uh, let's have the next. Uh, Kieran. A happy farm. Yes. Happy. Uh, sure one. Mama. I think we have another one. Let's have four. Mr. Levan? The yep. Peanut Vendor. Yeah. From uh, the well known song of the same name, The Peanut Vendor. And Peanut fifth Vendor. and last. <laughs> Mr. Adams, do you have it? He's a juggler. I beg pardon? No. No, that's wrong. The Umbrella Man. Oh, but you got it the second time. That's going to cost, uh... I was being killed. I know... Oh, I beg your man. pardon, Mr. Levant. In that case, we'll allow you the benefit, the courtesy of information, please. Mr. Adams. Very good. Did the okay. Did five the out of five. That's all pass. we'll have time for tonight. That means Canada Dry is set back to the tune of $20. In a moment, I'll give you the lineup for next week at this time. But in the meantime, Mr. Cross has a word to say. Many of you have already obtained the information, please, gain, which has been prepared for you by Canada Dry. You can play Information, Please, in your home, just as we do here in the studio, with four times as many questions as we have in one of our broadcasts. You'll get a big kick out of stumping those neighborhood experts. So listen carefully while I tell you what you have to do to get your copy of the Information, Please, game. Tear the labels from two bottles of any of Canada Dry's many beverages. Don't worry if you're unable to get them off in one piece. Just make sure the pieces are fairly large. Then mail both labels or pieces of labels with 10 cents to cover the cost of postage and handling to Canada Dry, 1 Pershing Square, New York City. If you live in Canada, the address is Canada Dry, Toronto, Canada. Send for your game of information, please, tonight, because it's a lot of fun. And just one thing more, along with those two labels and 10 cents, don't forget to include your own name and address. Believe it or not, some people do. Thanks, Mr. Cross. Ladies and gentlemen, next week at this time, the board of experts will consist of our two anchor men, Mr. Adams and Mr. Kieran, and two guests of honor. One of them has ranged all over the intellectual map. He's been music critic, book critic, drama critic, editor, political commentator, writer of many books that deal brilliantly with the American scene. I'm referring...